Did you know Echoplex has a 24-hour stream? That's right. Check out our 24-7 music stream at echoplexmedia.com slash live or at eplex.xyz. Our huge self-submitted local music library plays the best tunes the Bay Area has to offer, ad and commercial free, well, except for ours, and even by request. Check out the player on echoplexmedia.com or at eplex.xyz. Bookmark it and enjoy it all day. Echoplex is very supportive of our local music scene, and we hope you enjoy the soundtrack they've so graciously sent in for us to play on our network. If you like who you hear, please go check them out. The names of the artists are displayed on the player at echoplexmedia.com and at eplex.xyz. Now, broadcasting from deep within your stepmom's basement, it's the Echoplex Podcast. Welcome to the Plex. We do the show live every Sunday, 7 p.m. Pacific, right here on Twitch, twitch.tv slash echoplexmedia. <clears throat> you can support this project by just going to echoplexmedia.com, click the support tab, and uh, choose your favorite way to support. 
I personally like the swag shop. And uh, I'm producer Dave. You can find me on Grinder, and this is what the people want. I don't hate the cops. Oh, there's a person inside when the torture stops. Oh, don't hate the cops. Oh, when the raiders come, who will protect the shops? Don't hate the cops. Well, they're a sensitive bunch. If you don't stop throwing your rock, snap, crack, or pop. It's the sound of a taser. Your body drops. Don't hate the cops. Oh, don't hate the cops. Don't hate the cops. Oh, don't hate the cops. Like your local police. Cause they don't do nothing wrong Like your local police Got rid of the corruption And the racism is gone They've been keeping the peace Keeping homeless folks out of the parks and malls Got a cure for your social disease Follow the law Don't hate the cops Follow the law Don't hate the cops Follow the law Don't hate the cops everybody uh greg gutfeld had a hell of a day one one day this week on the five he said a bunch of crazy shit and uh we're gonna we're gonna check it out but only certain people get criminal mulligans and january 6 protesters they don't get criminal mulligans and here's why they're the oppressor right so the oppressed get criminal mulligans the people that are complaining like us we're actually oppressors and we, we're losing power so that's why we're upset I just got a job at MSNBC. <laughs> but let, so let's compare the rights between criminals and victims. OK, the criminals, they get a mulligan. They get to steal up to eight, eight, nine hundred dollars worth of stuff. They can loiter, sleep and shoot up in public areas, including playgrounds. They can loot and burn and call it social justice. Uh, they can uh, pile up dozens of arrests and never do time. Meanwhile, what about us? Well, we have to change our lives to accommodate risk wherever we go. We have to move out of cities for the sake of the safety of our families and our own safety. That's what's happening. We're Greg Gutfeld's never going to leave New York City. Being driven out of cities by the oppressed. So I return to my imperfect analogy from yesterday. We had a war over slavery. We knew slavery was inhumane and immoral, but somehow we couldn't solve slavery peacefully. It was an evil but one side refused to acknowledge that it was evil because it was too big of an admission for them to make. Doesn't that feel that way now that this defiant refusal to reverse this decline argues against the survival of a country? What does that leave you with? It leaves you with you need to make war to bring peace because you have a side that cannot change because then that means an admission that their beliefs have been corrupt all the time. So in a way, you have to force them sur to surrender. Or we but, could make love, not war. Uh, I tried that once. Or we have an election. I had to go to a doctor. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> election, yeah. No, elections idea. don't work. We know that. 
We know they don't work. They do work. Look what we have. Look what we have. Yeah, but, but so you had a moderate, we had a moderate president and we have crime exploding everywhere. We had a Democrat president promise that he was going to be moderate, promise that he was going to unite the country. And now we have a terrible education system. But, we have no border. We have crime everywhere. This Every guy's so full of shit. Society is in peril and in chaos because our elections don't matter. They, I, no, I complete, no, elections do matter. We don't need to go to war for it. We go to election booth and vote the people out who don't do the things. Oh, I wish so this is fucking crazy because, uh, <clears throat> first of all, like, uh, this this guy i'd like to introduce these people to or at least greg, greg got filled to the years like 1986 through 1994 if he wants to talk about violent crime in cities my god violent crime in cities is has been on a downward trend since the 90s if it's ticking up a little bit it's ticking up a little bit it can't possibly just continue to go down forever so up next more of greg gutfeld talking about this shit But only certain people get criminal mulligans. And January 6th protesters, they don't get criminal mulligans. And here's why. They're the oppressor, right? Wait a minute. We have, this, is the, this is the same clip we just watched. Hang on a sec. But only certain people get criminal mulligans. And Jan- Wait, this is the same clip over and over again. But only certain... Yeah, that's the same clip over and over again. I was confused. Anyway, that was a, um, like a pretty, pretty crazy thing that guy just said. He's like, we have to go to war. Like, with who? Do they, uh, should, are people just going to declare war on the cities? On the mayors of cities? The governors of states? Like, who, or, or does he just mean declare war on the residents of the cities? Because the residents of the cities, like, I don't know, refuse to vote out the crime, which is a little bit crazy. Refuse to, what? What are the residents refusing to do? I don't understand. I just don't, I don't get what the, what the fuck he was. I mean, I know we all know what he means. He, he thinks it's time to like, whoop, whoop ass. And he probably, I mean, in the end, it pro- it's probably, probably, you know, black and brown people he wants to go after. It's fucking wild. And I can't believe like the, the other, not, not one person on that panel. Well, we, we didn't see much after that, but you know, Jesse Waters' dumbass was like, oh, make love, not war. And Greg Gutfeld's like, I tried that once. I'm like, what does that mean? I don't think that really means anything. But don't worry. Here's a more of Gutfeld. This time he's got on a guy named Walter Kern, and they're going to talk about how to get women because I'm sure they're, they're experts at that. Um, men, you know, as far as sex bots and pornography go, men after a million years of hunting elk and bringing them home to their wives and the wife saying, that's a pretty small elk, um, have finally got the world exactly the way they want it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, this guy is saying it's immature. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, the fact is that the way to get women also is not to make them feel safe. I used to try to do that. Yeah. Um, uh, now, now what do you do? Um, and they would leave my table and go over to the guy in the leather jacket who made them feel excited yeah um so so buy a leather jacket he's not going to he's not going to foster any relationships with this sort of soft sell clean shirt make them feel uh, safe advice yeah if guys want to know how to get women they should listen to mick jagger not <laughs> nyu <laughs> professor what what the shit is this oh this is all this this is that crap about how oh, women don't like the nice guy it's fucking incel shit uh, but I mean, of course, there's incel shit on the fucking um, Gutfeld show, and I believe on that same episode of the Gutfeld show, here is a Gutfeld's ode to one Mr. Matt Taibbi, who was the subject of our last episode of the Intellectual Dollar Tree. If, of course, Twitter allows us to play the video, it's a hell of a website they got over there. I wasn't fair to you. I used. To, I feel bad, so I want to make it up to, to you with this. I'm so sorry, Matt Taibbi. I've made fun of you for years. I feel ashamed. To be fair, Greg Gutfeld didn't really make fun of anyone. He just said dumb things. I'm so sorry, Matt Taibbi. But I've seen the lies so Sorry. 
Yes. That was fucking cringe. I don't. I'm so glad we were um, not exposed to that entire interview because it was probably the entire interview was really cringe. They all love Matt Taibbi now, though, because he's a uh, he operated as a stenographer for uh, Elon Musk during the so-called Twitter files. That's why they're sorry, right? They <clears throat> they just are glad that he's I don't know, like like uh, doing the lab leak shit, um, and just most mostly just kind of being a, a jerk and being an idiot on um on twitter and on substack so they they like that so now we're going to move on uh trump's uh trial seems not to be going very well he's not having the best time in court and i got a couple clips about that this is his company this is his life and people forget that president trump I, I hope they don't forget you shouldn't you can't president trump was a very important person before he was president he was a successful businessman which is why he was a great president he built this company from scratch and now they're attacking his business the people that work for this business and his children it's uncanny and he's not going to stand for it because this is political lawfare this isn't this isn't so, the justice system this is political a hundred percent he needed so attacking his children, yeah, they were a party to everything he did. He involved them in his business and in his presidential administration. At that point, they're not his children. These are adults. Um, they're not going after Barron, right? And they're not going after Tiffany, who didn't have anything to do with any of this shit. They're going after the three that did because they had something to do with this shit. So I don't know. Don't have something to do with shit if you don't want, uh, if you don't think that it should come back on you if it goes bad um here's trump talking about the uh the judge and the attorney general in one of, in his case <laughs> he's not pleased we're going down the line page after page document after document and the bottom line is this is rigged because the judge knows whatever he's going to do he said that Mar-a-Lago is worth $18 million, and it's worth $1.5 billion for thereabouts. $1.5 billion? He thinks his fucking Mar-a-Lago estate is worth $1.5 billion? It's worth $18 billion. So they defrauded us because he called me a fraud. He called me a fraud, and he hits back his mar Well, I think that's what the case is about, is that you, I think you've been... <laughs> I think that's what you've been accused of. 18 million, 18 million. And you can't do that. It's worth probably 50 to 100 times more than that. And our corrupt attorney general, she's totally corrupt. She just wanted the publicity to run for governor. And then she failed running for governor. She had, no, she had practically nothing in terms of vote. But she went after Trump because she was running for governor. That's the only reason. But she got the judge to value Mar-a-Lago for $18 million. When the smallest house in Palm Beach is probably worth $50 million. What? And this is the biggest, the best anywhere in the country. There's nothing like it. So they put it down at $18 million And they said, I, I overvalued it because we had it valued at a much lower number than it's worth. But that's also within your, if, if, so, okay. So no matter how you slice it, he's like saying it's worth less than it is, is also fraud. Saying it's worth more than it is for like to get a loan is fraud. Like this, both of those things are, 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 are shady and illegal. Way, my financial documents are valued much less than my actual value. Um, that's probably that's called that's tax fraud probably which nobody even knows but the financial documents that i gave to the bank are much less than my actual net worth so therefore i gave them to the bank they can't be a fraud because i gave them lower numbers i'm probably one of the only people ever to seek a loan i didn't even need the loan because you see the kind of cash i have i didn't even need loans well, then why did you take out loans? I have a lot of cash, a lot of everything. You know, a lot of people are very surprised at how successful this is. You saw it today with the kind of cash I have and the kind of success we've had. 
But I'm a private company. I was never going to reveal this kind of stuff. But now it comes out. <laughs> I'm either worth more or less than I uh, than I than I am supposed to be, depending upon the circumstances who I'm talking to and what I'm trying to get done. See, that's just business, baby, business. <laughs> So uh, I've got I've got more on this here. This is uh, <laughs> I call this one. Uh, congrats, you played yourself. Um, <laughs> here's this. Uh, this is uh, from Fox's The Five. They have a uh, one a one liberal on the five, and um, you know she's usually not that great, but in this case, she did a congrats. You played yourself. Donald Trump campaigned in 2015 and 2016 over doing things like this. He told everybody, I'm the guy that can fix the code because I'm the one that knows every loophole and I've been taking advantage of them. So we all knew this was happening. To the Mar-a-Lago point and down the street, there's this $53 million home, but it is a private home, whereas Mar-a-Lago is registered and for good reason, because it's a club where you can go and party and you can stay as an income producing club, which is taxed and treated differently. This also isn't the appraisal of just the county commissioner or whatever. This is what the Trump organization said it was worth. In 2020, they self-reported that it was worth $27 million. And now he's going around screaming that they're framing him. Then your own company framed you. It <laughs> Congratulations. You played yourself. Yeah, the, the, that's by their own documents, the the club was worth somewhere between 15 and $30 million by their own account of the, the value of, of Mar-a-Lago. And, um, he just, I don't know why he, I don't know why he can't, I don't know why he doesn't understand that they're just using what he said, like in court, because that's what, they tend to do is if you said something they're like well you said this like on the record here's the record of you saying it in this financial document he's like well that's wrong and it's like well that's not what you're supposed to say about your own financial documents you dumb fuck you're supposed to say oh i you know um the, the, i didn't that you know i have uh people who handle that for me or whatever you know i i was uh, that that is the appraised value actually i guess i was just incorrect Anyway, here's here's some um, here's some of Don Jr.'s deposition. Uh, he didn't do very well on the uh, SAT, if you could imagine that. Do you have any familiarity with an acronym GAAP? G A A P. Generally accepted accounting principles. Yes. Okay. How did you become familiar with that acronym? Probably in accounting 101 at Wharton. Okay. Um, what do they teach you about? generally accepted accounting principles in Wharton? Uh, well, I'm not an accountant, but that they are generally accepted. <laughs> Anything else? That's, that's pretty much what I remember from accounting 101. So. <laughs> Have you told me everything you know about GAP? <laughs> uh, basically. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm sure I could come up with some creative uh, <laughs> stuff to kill time, but I'd be doing neither of us a favor in terms of educating ourselves. <laughs> Oh, this guy's an idiot. Also, he didn't go to Wharton, as far as I know. As far as we know, he didn't get into Wharton. So, oh, well, it's no, it's not that he didn't get into Wharton. Uh, he got in because of money, not because he uh, because of academic performance. That's uh, my mistake there. So up next, we got uh, Bannon just issuing threats while uh, on uh, supervised release uh, during a during pending uh, litigation, during pending court cases. You know, as you do. As you do. Free on an ap appeal bond, he is. And he's just, you know, making making terror, making uh, thinly veiled terrorist threats. Because that's what you do when you're, on a, when you're on an appeal bond. You go around making thinly ve ve veiled terrorist threats on your show. Your day's coming, dude. After January of 2025. When we go back over this whole illegitimate regime and we get into the receipts, he should be in prison for the rest of his life. And my God, if we do our job after we win, he will be in prison for the rest of his life. 
Except, and I think he's talking about Attorney General Merrick Garland there, and I believe he will not because it would be, it's going to be very tough to get people to go along. Like if if Trump wins in uh, 2024 and takes office in 2025, it's actually going to be tough to find people who are going to go along with um, with an agenda such as throw the old Attorney General in uh, prison for life because we say so. Because they uh, investigated the the current and uh, former president, I, it's going to be tough to find people to go along with that. Um, it's not going to be impossible, but you're going to need a lot of people to go along with a lot of bullshit. And I don't think it'll happen. Anyway, here uh, Fox News keeps bringing up the George Floyd protests, and yet again on the five, the uh, lone, like sort of slightly liberal leaning voice has to remind them who the president was when all that happened. I thought that that was a really interesting So pretend take. to be the middle ground, just like 2020. No, it's not pretending. It and if was. You, if that, you, yeah, but it why isn't. Just what happened so to this long. country? What do you mean Biden what pretended to be moderate, and look what happened. Look what yeah. we got. Are you, do you remember what this country looked like when that election happened? Yeah, we had less crime. No, we had no, you didn't. Actually, crime. all of the black, the black Lives Matter summer oh, of okay. looting, as you would call it, happened under President Trump. That summer was he caused in it. Democrat I get it. And we were. It was in Democrat cities. Coming up, <laughs> dirty Democrats face yeah. the music. Gold you- horn. It was in Democrat cities. When they say this shit, I I'm like, could you point me to one a city, one large city that is run by Republicans? And the the problem with that is no one can. Because there are no cities run by Republicans. There are cities with Republican mayors, sure. But then the city council is like a Democratic majority and the mayor has to play ball with the Democratic majority on the on the city council. So what, what happens here is any problems that are associated with cities and with population density, that's just super easy for them to tell stupid people that it's all the fault of the Democratic Party. But if they... You know, maybe they if they could do a better job of getting people in cities to fucking vote for them, then I guess they could go in and clean up the cities, right? But that's never going to happen. So this is just like a freebie for them where they never have to actually do anything about it. So up next, we uh, Fox News uh, viewer, Fox News and their viewers are big mad that uh, Hillary Clinton, who, by the way, I think should go away, said that uh, Trump voters or some Trump voters uh, need to be deprogrammed. But I really need everyone to spare me the faux outrage and the pearl clutching about this little collection of things that Donald Trump and high-ranking Republicans call liberals on a daily basis. Anarchists, anti-American, deranged, communists, corrupt, compromised, groomers and perverts, thugs and traitors. Now, she was explicit that she was talking about a subsection of the Republican Party the same way that Joe Biden is when he talks about this MAGA extremism. But you tell me if the leader of the Democratic Party, so that that would be Joe Biden, was facing four indictments with 91 felony counts. He had been found liable of sexually assaulting a woman and defaming her, that's E. Jean Carroll, guilty of fraud, sharing the nation's secrets, not only in the Mar-a-Lago indictment, but there was a report yesterday from ABC News that he had shared information about our nuclear submarine capacities with an Australian billionaire who's a member at Mar-a-Lago, who had then gone on and shared that with dozens of other people. Ended up making a purchase, I think, of three subs. It included specifics up to how many nuclear warheads they carry and how close they can get to Russian subs without being detected. And then I told you, so all of that is happening, and he's shooting up in the polls. And when you see those interviews of Trump supporters outside of the rallies, they're like, none of this is true. It's the big lie. He won the election, et cetera. And you wouldn't say to me, you guys are in a cult? It's actually tame what Hillary Clinton was saying. Jesse. She's fucking, she's all right. Like, she's not always great, but it's interesting that the five has somebody on who not just is like, like sort of liberal in name, but will push back against the people on the five. And I think, I think it's because the people that run Fox are starting to see the writing on the wall here, right? Not, not necessarily that they're going to be a liberal network or whatever, but I think they're starting to see that like, maybe a lot maybe enough people in their audience aren't are starting to kind of fall off this crazy train that it might be a good idea for them to like show some pushback and show like some opposing views here so here's uh, Kevin McCarthy he was big in the news this week this is before he uh was obviously ousted as speaker here's him lying about what happened with the uh, budget deal this week 
Most of the, in the press probably thought we would have shut down yesterday, too. But no, we did, did not. Were you confident we wouldn't shut down? I was confident I could get something on the floor to make sure the option that we would not. But that you were sure military, it was going to pass. Well, well, I wasn't sure it was going to pass. You want to know why? Because the Democrats tried to do everything they can not to let it pass. They did Democrats dilatory. were the ones who voted did you, for this did you in a did larger you watch number it? than Republicans to, to keep the continuing resolution alive. Did you watch Nine, the floor yesterday? Oh, yes. Okay, 90 the, the, Republicans voted against it. Okay. <laughs> She's like, he's like the Democrats. She's like, that's who voted for it, dude. She's like, that's who voted for it. Like, this guy's, he's so ineffective. He's not even good at lying, and that's probably why he got ousted. Um, here is uh, Marjorie the Gathering. She was mad she had to be at the at the the Capitol because, well, she wanted to go on vacation. She couldn't very well go on vacation while she was uh, handling this budget thing, and she's on this Benny guy, the Benny Show. Oh, this guy, this guy's awful. So yeah. it's absolutely absurd for anyone to think that we can pass these this budget and these bills uh, by the year end. It's a system of failure. And that's what I'm angry about. I'm angry at Kevin McCarthy. I'm angry at the leadership. And I'm going to be demanding change because what we need to do is we need to change our calendar system that forces. We need to change our calendar system so I can go on vacation to stay here in Washington, D.C. and get our work done and right. then we can go home. And it shouldn't back up to a deadline that, that punishes the country. It shouldn't back up to a deadline that punishes, frankly, our own family. And our own families are the ones that are always put last. Birthdays are forgotten. Uh, special events are, you, you have to miss them because you got to be here in Washington because the government's going to shut down or because we got to pass these important bills. No, all of it needs to change. We need a calendar system of success. And then we need to continue to do the hard work that we're doing. Oh, right shit. Now. Just put success on the calendar. I never thought of that. Did you ever think about that, anybody? Just cal just put a calendar item up that says succeed by succeed by this date. And then everything will be fine. Everything will be a success. And uh, Marjorie the Gathering can go on vacation. Fantastic. Fucking genius shit right there. I'm, Im I'm impressed with that. Aren't you impressed? Very impressive. Well, big news this week, at least uh, on the domestic front here is that uh, Kevin McCarthy was ousted as the Speaker of the House, and here's uh, what he had to say after he was ousted. The one thing I will tell you is, doing the right thing isn't always easy, but it is necessary. But you've never been good at that. I don't regret standing up for choosing governing over grievance. It is my responsibility. It is my job. I do not regret negotiating. Our government is designed to find compromise. I don't regret my efforts to build coalitions and find solutions. I was raised to solve problems, not create them. So I may have lost a vote today, but as I walk out of this chamber, I feel fortunate to have served the American people. I leave the speakership with a sense of pride, accomplishment, and yes, optimism. From the day I entered politics, my mission has always been to make tomorrow better than today. I fought for what I believe in, and I believe in this country of America. My goals have not changed. My ability to fight is just in a different form. You need 218. Unfortunately, 4% of our conference can join all the Democrats and dictate who can be the Republican speaker in this house. <laughs> I don't think that rule is good for the institution, but apparently I'm the only one. I believe I can continue to fight, maybe in a different manner. I will not run for speaker again. I'll have the conference pick somebody else. So he doesn't think that the 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 rule, uh, the 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 procedure of electing the speaker of the house, where wherein the person has to get a majority of the people in the house. He thinks that might not be a good system, but I think that's just because he got kicked out. And I think that finally the Democrats did something pretty fucking cool here, right? They, they, they really kind of, they were like, like we could have, we could have like kept this guy in, right? They could have kept him in because they know they're going to get a Republican speaker and it might be somebody crazier than Kevin McCarthy next, but they were like, nah, fuck you. 
<laughs> they were like, we'll vote with the crazy people in your party and kick you out and see what you guys do next. Because they this, remember, this is after they passed the continuing resolution to keep the government open. So until like basically until um, I think it's not very long from now, actually, but between now and then the news cycle is going to be that the Republicans, the Republican caucus is in disarray. Right. So it's it, that's all that's going to be in the news. And this is pretty smart on the part of the Democrats. Good retail politics here. This is um, Fox is big mad. Fox is big mad. This is a bit longer clip. Um, it's about six minutes and it's uh, on the ouster of Kevin McCarthy. They have thrown Kevin McCarthy overboard. Our next guest is one of those GOP members who voted to oust Kevin McCarthy. Congressman Tim Burchett joins us now. Congressman, you were one of the eight. So Speaker McCarthy had 96% approval rating, but that wasn't good enough for you. Do you feel good about your vote? Well, I don't know about 96%. Uh, well, I they think voted you need for to ask the people. Well, I don't work for the people in Congress. I work for the people of the 2nd District of Tennessee. And overwhelmingly, the folks are, are tired of the fact that we take in $5 trillion and we spend $7 trillion, that your leadership continues to pass these um, continuation resolutions. They push us right up against a holiday. Well, guess what? The 45-day uh, one is, is pushed right up against it. We took off six weeks this summer from August. To, we usually just take off August, but they decided to take over two more weeks. And I feel like that's a failure of leadership. They're the ones who set the schedule. So, He's the speaker. Right. Ultimately, the buck stops somewhere. And diverting the uh, attention somewhere else, I think, is just wrong. So you realize this is the first time in history that this has been done. So you have, you're upset about six weeks in the summer. Did you call him during the summer well, and I'm say, can we get back to work? I'm also upset at the fact we're $33 trillion in debt is that and Kevin the value McCarthy's of the dollar. Fault? It could be. He needs to accept some responsibility. <laughs> Didn't he have an eight percent cut offered over the over that in that continuing resolution bill? And the rate of growth, but you're not looking at, at, at the thirty three trillion, and that's just and that's 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 really just peanuts compared to the thirty three trillion that we've run up. You know, we we. I wonder can, if this if, guy that Brian Kilmeade's trying to do a tough interview with has ever voted against the military budget, for example. That, that we did pass the appropriations the one that had the cut was the agriculture bill and it didn't pass because the republicans sided with democrats but yet the um right. the defense and you bill think which this had, is the well, best wait, wait, wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute the, the defense bill that had 30 billion new dollars in the pentagon which has never passed an audit which has lost at one time 60 percent of their assets oh, i was wrong about this guy Reward them with thirty billion more dollars for the war. Wait, it, did you just say at one point the Pentagon lost sixty percent of their assets? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The, the defense bill that had thirty billion new dollars in the Pentagon, which has never passed an audit, which has lost at one time sixty percent of their assets, we reward them with thirty. Wait, at what time? Is he talking about that shit that they were talking about before nine eleven? Where um, I think that's what he's talking about—the conspiracy theory that. Uh, some unreasonable amount of money disappeared from the Pentagon, but it turned out that it was like just a like a clerical error and the money never actually went anywhere. I think that's what he's talking about, right? Thirty billion more dollars for the war pimps at the Pentagon can can, can <laughs> spread more war around the, so, around so the it's globe. Up, so. so because he didn't audit the Pentagon and get no. every appropriation bill done, you're going to make Look, history it, by ousting him to move your agenda forward. Here's what Kevin McCarthy said about you. I personally like Tim Burchett, and I called Tim Burchett because I read his quote. And Tim Burchett's a friend of mine, which I'm kind of shocked by this. And Tim Burchett... None of these people are your friend. Quote ...said, he's leaning towards no, he's on CNN, but I'm going to pray about it. So I pick up the phone and call him, because I didn't think he was already there. I said, Tim, um, I read your quote. You said you're going to pray about it. I want to talk to you about it. And somehow he construes that, I'm a Christian. I'm not going to offend somebody. From I simply read his quote back. I thought there was still an opening... And I wanted to talk to him about it. He never mentioned anything when we were communicating like that. So he, you said no, you, you said part of the reason you voted like that is because you felt he was mocking you, correct? So it's personal. But yeah, and, and that's and that's not accurate. And that's any of that. I asked him about the six weeks off. I asked him about why we didn't have a term limits bill up and continued on down the line. And it was always wait a minute. Can't this guy propose a term limits bill? His fault. You know, leadership has responsibilities. The buck stops somewhere. And in the House of Representatives, it stop, stops at, and starts at the Speaker's office. And clearly that's not happening. And clearly, you know, you want to continue so, to make excuses for him. But the truth is, is his, his uh, approval rating around the country was not very high. 
and well, I do not. I don't represent. But Congress's people. approval rating is very low. This is a weird thing. People talk. Oh, Congress's approval rating is really low until you go to somebody's district and it turns out, oh, oh, oh their approval rating's okay in their own district. People that voted for them like them. They just don't like anybody else in Congress. That's weird. Congress, right, I, I represent know. the people in Tennessee. I, I got it. What do you think is going to do for the Republican Party and chances of holding on to leadership in the majority when it looks like you're having you're the uh, ringleader of a circus led by Matt Gates, who likes to blow things up but not offer any new ideas? Are you happy following Matt Gates? Is that your leader? I'm not following Matt Gates. I made my own decision. I didn't ask Matt. But if Matt for Gates didn't approval, challenge, you wouldn't going to challenge. Do what? If Matt Gates I, now, didn't stand up, you were going to challenge. You know I that. Believe I, I believe I would have. Oh, come I on. I, and they're, and they're, oh, well, please, you, you know, were praying please, about please. it one minute. The next minute you're going to lead an insurgency. And so you don't think that praying about it's important? Is that what you're saying? What, what? <laughs> this is the most fucking horrible interview I've ever seen. Oh, I could watch this 20 times. This is just an absolute fucking shit show. This is a bad interviewer. Who isn't good at like going after somebody, trying to go after somebody who's just fucking just gonna be like howdy doody and fucking good old boy and just fucking put that fucking show on and fucking be like, oh, you don't want me to pray? You're about how are you gonna vote with Matt Gates? And the next <laughs> minute you're gonna lead an insurgency? Listen, you got a predetermined answer to everything. I, I no, I have, about an, it. I have an opinion about what's going on. Do you have and an opinion too? And you talk over me every time I try to make All a right, point. All right, make your point. The point is, is that we're $33 trillion in debt. This speaker was woefully, woefully lacking in leadership skills. He always placed the blame somewhere else. America is going to be better off with new leadership. And right. That's the bottom and who line. is it? Yeah, possibly, possibly could be Steve Scalise. It could be Elise Stefan. It could be Roger Williams out of Texas. It could be um, uh, Mark Green out of Tennessee. So they all, supported, is, is, they all supported Kevin McCarthy, including the most conservative guy I know, Jim Jordan. Why are you smarter than Jim Jordan and and the 210? Dude, everybody's smarter than Jim. Asking somebody why they're smarter than Jim Jordan is like you could just I, even like I don't know who this guy is, but you could probably list off like 100 reasons why this guy's smarter than Jim Jordan. Plus Republicans. Why are you smarter? I represent my district, brother. And why are you smarter than me? You're right. condemning me well, because I'm just I, saying, I stand up on my own. And that's, that's I'm not what condemning I do. you. I'm questioning you. You don't like being no, you're questioned? Not. You're, no, you're just you're. The line of questioning is very negative, and you know that, and I right. know that. You And, and when I, this is all over with, when this is all over with, and we have a new speaker and we're running smooth, let's have this conversation again. Were you happy with John Boehner? I wasn't here with John Boehner. Right. With Paul Ryan? I, well, I'm, they're both rhinos. I mean, why you? They're not. they're not in my camp anyway, so I... But I, I wasn't here when they were here. So you had 15 yeses for uh, every round you voted for Kevin McCarthy, but you think he's the problem? Right now, I sure do. He's part of it. He's part of the, this, this whole problem. When you, don't, when you deny that there's a problem when, in, in this dysfunctional Washington, brother, that you, then you know there's a problem. You can't Who get denied past, there's a take, problem? You can't take, get past the, the fact we take in $5 trillion, we spend $7 trillion. And this and and leadership uh, I'm seems to be okay I'm with that. I'm fascinated the way you blame Kevin McCarthy that you're that you're 33 trillion dollars in debt. But well, I'm, I'm, you're going to get surprised. a new leader. I'm sure he's going to solve everything. Well, I'm uh, surprised that, that you give him full credit for all the successes that I, we've I don't, had because we well, name I me some successes for nine months. Had. I don't think you should take all the blame. Well, why why are we backing it up? We had nine months exactly. That's a great point. Why do we wait nine months to do something about the wall? Something about the budget. Something about, well, we never <laughs> None of those things. Term limits, you have to, I watched him for an hour and 15 public. minutes. He was, doing a, he was doing an awful lot, but not enough for you. Uh, well, Tim Burchett, uh, Congressman, thanks so much. Like, I, I don't fucking, I'm not a Kevin McCarthy stan, but you have to get this stuff through the Senate, which is controlled by the Democrats, and then for any of it to become law, you got to get the president to sign it. So just like doing this fucking, like trying to push like a right-wing agenda through right now ain't going to work. So, like, I don't know, Kevin McCarthy could have tried to do all that stuff, but then he would have failed at it, and then then these pe the same people would have been like, well, you weren't fucking, you didn't get anything through. And it's like, well, no, because I did what you told me to do. Like, I hope, yo, this is going to be a fucking amazing. This is going to be a fucking amazing, because they're, now they have to pick a new speaker. But the thing is, the there are like eight or ten Republicans that wanted to get rid of McCarthy anyway. So 
whoever they put up, those eight or ten people probably aren't going to like anyway, or they're going to put up somebody that they like, and then nobody's going to vote for them. <laughs> and I just see a scenario here where, and this, is, this would be very funny, where basically some moderate from either party, it could be the Democrats or the Republicans, runs and gets bipartisan support, and then these people are really pissed off. <laughs> Now, I don't think that's likely, but I think that would be my favorite outcome. Just some totally like milk toast moderate Republican from like a purple district, right? Or even like a milk toast moderate Democrat from like a purple district. And they just get enough bipartisan support to get through. And now these people really don't have what they want. Because like Kevin McCarthy was willing to at least like give them lip service and, and fucking toe the line a little for them but now if they've if these those people done went and pissed everybody off there might be some people that go and vote for somebody they don't even necessarily like just because they want to piss these other piss these fucking like a dozen or so uh crazies off right we'll see what happens that uh, that's what i hope i hope like some i hope that they end up with somebody that they hate even more because of what happened here so um here's a just a thread of a lot of uh infighting uh between you know Political talking heads and, um, well, mostly political talking heads. Up first, uh, we got Steve Bannon. He's like, obviously, this is an incredible day. A historic day. Tuesday, 3 October, in the year of our Lord 2023. If we can get that feedback up, let's go ahead and take it. Uh, that is Matt Gates talking about where we go from here. Obviously, an incredible day, and I want to say that we have to have steely resolve. For It's not a time uh, for celebration. It's not a time for um, f uh, not remembering our task and purpose. The task and purpose of this show is to provide a platform for activists, uh, for the MAGA movement, for uh, President Trump and his followers to help save this republic, to in fact make America great again. And today was a historic and epic battle. Uh, I think the final vote was 216 to 210, with eight, uh, a hard eight uh, is what drove it. If we have, I tell you, we're going to play some quick packages. I'm going to come back in. If we get Matt Gates. Uh <laughs> oh, this, I'm telling you, this is, this is going to just, this is going to get better. I cannot wait. I want more. Here's from um, here's from Janine Pirro. She's pretty pissed off here on Fox. Apoplectic says the uh, says the quote here. I'm furious. First of all, we're without a speaker. This is historic. Something like this hasn't happened in well over a hundred years. And now what we've got is total chaos when the Republicans are playing out their infighting on national television in a historic way instead of fighting Joe Biden's policies. The one time we are up in virtually every metric as it relates to the Biden administration, you've got the Republicans going out there and showing how dysfunctional they are as Matt Gates is engaging in fundraising. And I got to tell you something. I am furious. There's no question that this is something that they have been trying to do for almost nine months that McCarthy's been speaker. And the truth is that they've done a lot in Congress. They've got a lot of bills passed. Has, the fact that the Senate doesn't want to take them. They've done a lot in terms of oversight. And, you know, now you've got the Democrats. This is a crazy thing. Democrats who hate the MAGA Republicans are now joining with the MAGA Republicans to oust uh, Speaker McCarthy. This is like the devil is in the middle of all of this chaos. <laughs> it's not the devil. It's politics, Why lady. Are Republicans fighting with each other like this. Don't worry, your box wine will be there for you when you get home. Yeah, the Democrats joined in. They're like, oh, this is good. They're like, we don't ever, ever get to like get a win. We didn't have to do anything here. We just need to not, we just need to vote against the guy that we voted against before. Um, we, we can do that. I mean, I'm surprised the Democrats didn't not do that, to be perfectly honest. I, for a minute, I thought they were going to save him. Like when, when this was going on, I was like, oh, they're going to save him, right? They're going to try to like make a deal with him and the moderate republicans to try to save this guy and no they were like oh you want to you want to oust your own speaker let's party and i am actually fucking shocked that they did it 
the Democrats usually do not have the fucking balls to do something like this. They're usually so weak and ineffectual that they would have just to maintain the status quo and maintain some like, uh, like air of civility or whatever, they would have saved this guy, but they didn't. And I'm fucking shocked. Absolutely fucking shocked. So up next, we got a fucking Sean Hannity. These people are just not happy. I fucking, I I'm here for it. For the first time in the history of this country, it's unprecedented. The house has now removed a speaker and now the speaker to a pro tem. What's his name again, Linda? Um, from North Carolina. T Patrick T. McHenry. McHenry. Yep. Patrick T. McHenry. Remember that name because you're going to hear it a lot lately in the next few hours. Anyway, the House now will probably begin the process because nothing else can be done on the floor without a speaker. Everything else. <laughs> No bills. Ah, uh, no more investigations of Hunter Biden's laptop and his dick. No nothing. Body paralyzed on the floor until it elects a speaker. By the way, I guarantee you, Democrats are doing backflips. They're loving this. Oh, yeah, it's fine. The House could very well go into a series of hour after hour, if not day after day of consecutive votes. By the way, on the issue even, uh, you know, we've got 45 days. They did pass the continuing resolution. But, you know, who knows how long this could go on. If you want to look at historical precedent, you know, it was pretty historic when it took five days, 15 votes to elect McCarthy. That was the longest election since 1859. The election of Speaker Howell Cobb of Georgia took two weeks in 1849. And if you're interested in a little more history, the longest election for Speaker ran for two months. That's 1855 to 56. And then the House uh, finally elected Speaker Nathaniel Banks on the 133rd ballot, I quote Donald Trump, why? Infighting. Why are they, well, why not be focused on the people that are causing the damage? The exact quote is, why is it the Republicans are always fighting among themselves? Why aren't they fighting the radical left Democrats destroying the country? Anyway, 800 941 Sean is our number. You want to be a part of the program? I think I'll Oh, I wish I could have called. A lot of your reaction. I'm like, you know, neener, neener. Uh, some of you agree, some of you disagree. I'm looking at my phone lines here. We'll hit the phones uh, throughout the next hour. We'll get some analysis. Newt Gingrich is going to weigh in. And oh, we'll great. Newt Gingrich is going to weigh in. Congressman Byron Donalds. I keep forgetting that Newt Gingrich is alive. And then people like Sean Hannity have to remind me. Oh, here's the take from Newsmax. Um, <laughs> this guy, this is where the yellow brick road ends, whatever the fuck that means. Congressman Matt Gates, though, I mean, this is somebody who wasn't taken seriously as recently as this morning, has effectively sent a shot across the bow for anyone who may run for the position moving forward, firmly declaring that the conservative agenda is now in control and not the status quo. North Carolina Congressman Patrick McHenry has been named the speaker pro tem, or, uh, and that's going to take place while they are um, making the making good to figure out who's going to take the next speakership is kevin mccarthy going to run again he could get voted in the possibility is there but we are going to keep uh, our eyes on this we're going to have a, a lineup of congressmen and uh, former congressmen representatives and uh, as well as dc consultants to explain all this because it hasn't happened in 123 years joining me now to discuss former national press secretary for the trump campaign hogan gidley and former georgia congressman doug collins doug I i'm i'm seeing this happen I couldn't believe my eyes. I, 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 people didn't think it was going to happen this morning. Uh, where do we go from here? What is this precedent set? And what do you think McCarthy's thinking? It, it's, it's a stun, really, Carl. I mean, this has never happened. I mean, it's just it, this has been brought up. It's never happened in this way. McCarthy, I think, knew this was happening. I think he knew it was coming. And probably as early as this morning, mm -hmm. knew the votes were not going to be there. Uh, I think they held out hope that might some might change, but we're in uncharted territory here. You know, this is you know, this is where the yellow brick road ends because there is no path here because it's never been done before. January could have been could have we could look back on January when it took 15 votes to get McCarthy and say that was a walk in the park because right now they have no path. McCarthy obviously right now does not seem to have a path. They don't know where they're at, so it's going to be interesting. Hogan, let's talk about the political ramifications here, and we're going to have Den Crenshaw joining us in just a moment. Um, but the the issue now, like I said, this is a shot across the bow of the status quo. No. Well, this is going to be. I, I can't wait. This is. It's going to keep. This is just going to get better and better and better and better and better and better. Like, because it's going to take them fucking forever to get 
to like get another speaker and because these in if they if they try to go for someone of the far right only these crazies are going to vote for them and if they try to go for somebody for the establishment these crazies are going to block it and they're going to have to like go and beg the fucking democrats to vote for somebody and it's just going to be a shit show and i just hope the fucking i hope the fucking democratic party like fucking holds the line this time and it's just like no we will vote for a democrat <laughs> If you can't man, if you can't hold your caucus together, then we're not going to save you. Fuck you. Here's a uh, Newt Gingrich on the, uh, I believe, on the Hannity program to uh, talk about this. Uh, it from my perspective, I know there's a lot of angst, anxiety, panic. I'm not there yet. Um, uh, however, they need to get their act together. But with a three or four vote majority. It's not easy. You've been there with, you know, when you're dealing with all these varying factions and points of view in the House, it's hard. Sure. But look, you, you had 4% of the conference, 4% side with all of the Democrats. Now, that's suicidal. To I mean, be fair, they didn't really side with the Democrats so much as the Democrats were like, all right, let's party. <laughs> right? It's It's not like... Yeah, they, they, they weren't really, those people weren't, those eight people weren't siding with the Democrats. The Democrats sided with those eight people, but out of spite, which I, I very much appreciate. Gates hates McCarthy, and maybe somebody else can bring the eight of them back or whatever. But but if I were there, I, I don't, candidly, Sean, I don't know what I'd do. I, I would regard these eight people as traitors. I would think that uh, what they just did. Traitors? Are they really traitors? I mean, I think those people are true believers. I mean, to, to say to 210 of your colleagues, we don't care who you choose, the eight of us are more important, and we are going to side with your mortal opponents. That's how first past the fucking, first past fucking 50, 50 percent plus one works, friendo. I mean, are they, are they going to, you know, make Hakeem the speaker? Mm -hmm. they, they don't have any strategy. These were eight people on a suicide mission with no idea of the next step. Mm -hmm. and, they have no idea. And the longer this goes on, the worse it looks to the country. Yeah, but I don't, I don't worry about that. I mean, we, we, we will get through this at some point. I, we just got some polling numbers back at, at the America's New Majority Project, you know, that I run. Uh, and, you know, we're up by eight points on the generic ballot. Uh, Gallup just came out and said that we we are way ahead, not because we're smart, but because Biden and Bidenism is so bad. It's going to be like Jimmy Carter. Uh, so uh, you know, I, I, as a practical matter, politically, but he I'm just said a worried. generic. So it's like uh, Biden or a generic challenger. Well, yeah, the the generic challenger almost always wins, no matter who the incumbent is. In the short run, I worry. In the long run, you know, and the answer is. You, if you want Republicans to govern, you better get them about 30 more seats in the House and about six more seats in the Senate. I totally agree with that. That's what's not going to happen. There are not 30 seats in the House to be had or six more seats in, in the Senate. Uh, Fox, here's Fox. Apparently they had uh, Gates on to uh, solicit some donations instead of even covering uh, the speech by Kevin McCarthy. That's amazing. This is all fucking amazing, and um, I am here for it. And it's going to be very hard, I think, for them to get anyone um, as the speaker because I think those eight people aren't going to just—they're just not going to vote for anybody moderate. Here's uh, Greg Gutfeld. He laments the state of the Republican Party. He's like, "Look at the monster that I have helped create. I am, I am appalled." No, I'm not sure that I care because I'm with Trump on this. I mean. We're talking about this instead of the border, instead of crime. What's up with that woke fucking mug that he's got in front of him? Instead of inflation. Every time the Republicans implode, you just give the Democrats more cover than Gerald Nadler's underpants. We Wait, what the fuck is that? Right here, right? And instead of uniting and fighting for the people of America who can sense that this country's going in a really bad direction, we're doing this. 
I get it. It's a historic event, but it's like one of the few historic events that I don't care about. This has no effect on our viewers. Does it make our streets safer? No. Does it make our borders real again? No. Does it make our gas prices go down? No. It's just sound and fury signifying incompetence. And I get I get my sense is this was a personal thing. It's a personal thing that's being acted out publicly. Yep. And good. You know what? It's kind of pathetic. But that's my opinion, right. and I'll be going now. Right. All right, goodbye. Bye. <laughs> I mean, he's right. I don't like. I don't like Greg Gutfeld. I, I don't believe like the. I don't have the same like assessment as to like what the problems are. But he's right that like it. 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 It looks really dumb. <laughs> and not for nothing. Yeah. The. The. The, for uh, any number of reasons, the Democrats are seem, seeming to be a little bit weak as a party going into the 2024 election. And so the Republicans are like, eh, well, might as well just do something fucking crazy. And then that's what they did. Here's, um, here's Sean Hannity, uh, talking about, uh, Donald Trump, maybe for a speaker of the house. Now that'll be fun. If Donald Trump's name gets fucking put in for speaker of the house, I'm here for that shit. That'll be fun. But I don't I'm skeptical that that's going to happen. I am not confident that's what's going to go down. We'll see though. McCarthy will not seek the speakership again. Now, sources telling me at this hour some House Republicans have been in contact with and have started an effort to draft former President Donald Trump to be the next speaker. And I have been told uh, that uh, President Trump might be open to helping the Republican Party, at least in the short term, if necessary, uh, if it's needed. Anyway. It's amazing. That's fucking amazing. I, I'm, I'm here for it. Let's party. Put up Donald Trump and then make, make the fucking, because there's going to be Republicans. If they do that, there's going to be Republicans, like moderate, more moderate Republicans who are going to buck. And then it's going to be an even bigger shit show. So let's go. Let's, let's do it, baby. Let's do it. So up next, we got um, Jessica Tarlov, the uh, lone liberal voice on uh, Fox is the Five. Got a lot of her this week. Uh, she's actually going to compare Nancy Pelosi favorably to Kevin McCarthy, which is interesting. Um, you hear a lot about the impossible job of managing a caucus like this. He only had a five seat majority. That is the same number that Nancy Pelosi had, and she managed just fine. Yep. Nothing like this ever happened when Nancy Pelosi was in charge. And the judge is correct in that they are squandering. Yeah, do y'all remember um, Force the Vote, where like Jimmy Dore and Aaron Mate and all those other fucking dumb, dumb left people were trying to get like the squad to not vote for Nancy Pelosi so that they could force uh, a vote on Medicare for All so that the Medicare for All could go down like four to one? Do you remember that? That's that's th th nobody bit. Everybody was like, you're crazy. An opportunity today, Gallup released um, their economic poll data. Republicans have the largest advantage on who's better to handle the economy since 1991. And this will be the cycle for I don't know how many days, especially if they don't even go back and meet with their caucuses tonight. There are 18 Republican congressmen and congresswomen in districts that Joe Biden won. And those people voted for divided government. They said, we want Joe Biden in the White House, but we want to make sure that we have Republicans in control of Congress. This obviously signals that they made a big mistake. But McCarthy actually has no one to blame but himself. Obviously, Matt Gates has his own agenda, et cetera. Kevin McCarthy decided that he should go on Face the Nation this weekend and lie about how that continuing resolution got cut over the weekend. He tried to blame the Democrats. Marge Brennan pushed back and she was like, no, 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 no. They saved your butt like they did back in January. And it's being widely reported that if he had not done that, there would have been Democrats that would have shifted over and supported him to keep yep. him in control of this. It was a big, big mistake that he did that, squandering that opportunity to hold on to the speakership for. I don't yep. Yep. I, yeah, I kind of forgot about that. This this uh, Jessica Tarlov is I mean, she's probably got she got staff and stuff, but she's she hit the nail right on the head there. Uh, she, he went on and like lied and said, oh, the Democrats tried to prevent us from doing this, even though the Democrats were the ones that voted for the continuing resolution. 
And then, then he went over and said, Hey, uh, some of you should maybe, uh, uh, help me keep the speakership. They were like, <laughs> and I hope that's, I hope that's at least one of the responses. He, I hope he got at least one of those responses. No, a few more months. Um, but yeah, Nancy Pelosi, hats off to you. Well, it's easy. <laughs> yeah. Nancy Pelosi largely was able to hold her uh, caucus together. I don't agree with her politics or whatever. And I don't, you know, I don't think she, you know, she'd probably do an insider trading just like all the fucking rest of them. But uh, she was fairly effective in that in that role, especially when they had a very slim majority. Yeah, uh, Jessica Tarlov is right there. I don't know for sure if him going on, uh, what was it, Face the Nation and saying that about the Democrats is the reason they weren't willing to help him, but it didn't help. I think, I think it was just they were like, oh, you know, they... We're speaking among each other, maybe, and we're like, we're just looking a little weak going into 2024. Let's party. Let's see what happens here. And that's probably a combination of many things, but he couldn't get a couple of them to fucking cross over. And so now this is amazing. I'm fucking here for it. Up next, we got um, Representative Nancy Mace, who is in the process, possibly, of having the courts uh, ungerrymander her district so that uh, she might not have such an easy time winning. She uh, didn't have a great time on CNN this week, if you could imagine that. Caitlin, the establishment is coming after me. I've had a lot of threats about my fundraising. I'm asking people to go to my website at nancymace.org to help me uh, to, to show their support because there, there are yeah. folks that are coming after me tonight. Uh, I'm glad you brought that up because back in January when there were the marathon votes for Kevin McCarthy to get this job, he was fighting to take the gavel. This is something that you said. Mm -hmm. Matt Gates is a fraud. Every time he voted against Kevin McCarthy last week, he sent out a fundraising email. Uh, what you saw last week was a constitutional oh, process shit. diminished <laughs> by those kinds of people. Oh, no. Oh, shit. Get him. Fucking check this out. Last week was a constitutional process diminished by those kinds of political actions. Uh, of course, now here we are in October. You and Congressman Gates are, are in agreement on at least ousting McCarthy. You were on and here you are fundraising on CNN. A podcast together today. You yourself the have been irony, fundraising off irony. that vote. How do, you, <laughs> how do you explain that to, to now? Well, I have not been fundraising off of this every step of the way. I made my Wait, no, no, no. You just did that on this very interview. You just told people to go to your website and give you money. And they're probably showing, you know, her on Steve Bannon's show right here doing the fucking exact same thing. Last night, I, I made the decision to fundraise over the last 24 hours because of the threats that I have received over fundraising and money drying up, which is why I need help. The people, the establishment is coming after me. I've gotten a lot of threats from different groups and different members that they will withhold fundraising no matter what. And I do need help from the people. And that was a decision that I made late last night because of everything that was going on. And it is a genuine ask. And if they want, if, if people want to support the effort, they can go to nancymace.org. Well, that podcast was one that is done by Steve Bannon. Of course, you once voted to hold him in contempt of Congress, which he brought up today. Mm -hmm. Is he now advising you? No, nobody. I mean, I, I have consultants, but he is not one of them. I often will make my decisions on my own volition. Um, I don't take pressure from the outside world or outside groups generally. I'm not beholden to anyone anywhere. Not <laughs> NBC. I'm only beholden to the people. Um, and I make decisions on legislation, on votes generally on my own. But overall, uh, when you look at what you were saying in January, if someone looks at what you said then, what you say now, mm -hmm. and if a, if a critic says that you're being hypocritical of that, how do you how do you respond to them? I'm taking it from all sides right now. And because of the threats oh, that I've been me. receiving over the last couple of weeks, it finally reached a point last night. <laughs> oh, man. CNN doesn't do that to very many people very often. Right. They value access over doing that to somebody. They like that was like legitimately good. They made her they made her do the thing. They said, here, 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 play yourself. Because she just played herself. She went on there. She's like, I need you to give me money because I just voted to oust the speaker. And they were like, oh, funny you should say that. Fucking amazing. Fucking amazing.
I wish more media outlets in the U.S. would do that. They do all that shit all the time in the U.K., but I wish more media outlets in the U.S. would do this. Here's an, a Republican senator <laughs> going after Matt Gates. And this is this is something here. This this right here is some shit. You got to think about this guy. Um, this is a guy that didn't have that the media didn't give a time of day to after he was accused of sleeping with an underage girl. And there's a reason why no one in the conference came and defended him because we had all seen the videos he was showing on the house floor that all of us had walked away of the girls that he had slept with. He'd brag about how he would uh, crush ED medicine and 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 chase it with um, with an energy drink so he could go all night. This is obviously before you got married, and so when that accusation came out no one defended him and then no one on the media would give him a time of the day all of a sudden he found fame because he opposed the speaker of the house back in november and he's always stayed there and he's not he was never going to leave until he got this last moment of fame by saying by by going after a motion to vacate it's important to know congressman gates has never been charged with any sex trafficking crime and he gave this statement to cnn in response i don't think mark wayne mullen and i have said 20 words to each other on the house floor well, that's it's because he's a senator who doesn't know me and who's coping with the death of the political career of his friend kevin thoughts and prayers um yeah he's not you he's not a member of the house of Representatives. he's a senator so yeah he probably isn't going to have too many interactions with you on the house floor you fucking idiot <laughs> Oh, that might have been our palate cleanser, but actually, this right here is our palate cleanser. I almost didn't run this, but I was like, yeah, we, we're going to need this this week. I'm sure everybody has seen this. This is uh, one Kermit the Frog, and um, well, this is fantastic. You may find yourself living in a shotgun shack, and you may find yourself in another part of the world, and you may find yourself behind the wheel of a large automobile, and you may find yourself in a beautiful house with a beautiful wife, and you may ask yourself, well, how did I get here? Letting the days go by, letting the water hold me down, letting the days go by, water flowing underground, into the blue again, after the money's gone, once in a lifetime, water flowing underground, and you may ask yourself, how do I work this? And you may ask yourself, where is that large automobile? And you may tell yourself, this is not my beautiful house. And you may tell yourself, this is not my beautiful wife. Letting the days go by, let the water hold me down. Letting the days go by, water flowing underground. Into the blue again, after the money's gone. Once in a lifetime, water flowing underground. Same as it ever was. 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 Yeah, that was amazing. That was amazing. I had never, I don't think I'd ever seen that. And it was like all over everybody's feeds this week. So I was like, and I saw it in the, um, in the discord and I was like, you know what? This week's got a lot of kind of newsy news. So we got to run that. We got to run that. So here's judge Janine. Um, Clearly not understanding how uh, drug tests via hair work. <laughs> she thinks. Anyway, here, check this out. The haircut, or is there something else going on? Well, you know, we've known Hunter for a long time, and we've never seen him with a buzz cut. Mm -hmm. So I happen to think that uh, he's now represented by an attorney who knows full well that you can pee in a cup. Mm -hmm. They can test your blood. Uh, and a lot of drugs move very quickly through your system. Mm -hmm. But the part of your body that drugs don't move quickly through is your hair. Mm. And so I was a narcotics judge for over a year. And so I would mandate that certain defendants be tested by their hair. 
Now, um, the hair maintains the drug for a significant period of time, even for years, depending upon how long it is, mm. depending upon the toxicity, how concentrated it was, and how much was used. By his having a buzz cut, when they go to pull a hair, they're not going to have a sufficient amount to even be able to test so that he can be clean in a urine or a blood sample because there are some things like some marijuana can go in and out of your system in a matter of a day or two days some marijuana but marijuana is legal in most pl in most places in the united states but the hair you could also take pubic hair but we mm. know from the laptop that he happens to take care of himself down there <laughs> yeah, okay so uh what we've got is a guy who is very savvy about drug testing and doesn't want there to be any evidence about it now i can't i have to tell you the truth that's what goes on in real courtrooms now let me tell you one thing katie <laughs> about the, he can maybe based upon that federal court yeah. get away with one count mm -hmm. but he can't get away yeah, with the first two counts he so lied on a pistol permit application and he lied when he went to buy a gun okay and the other thing that i think is outrageous that he's supposed to communicate his international travel plans to the judge really why is this guy being allowed to to travel internationally shouldn't he even be registered as a foreign agent before he does that what i mean it's just a sad commentary on all the favoritism he's gotten so i did a little bit of checking to make sure i was right here uh they don't all they need is the fucking hair follicle. That's that's it. They don't need shit. They don't need like a long strand of hair. All they need is the fucking hair follicle. And if you have a buzz cut, the hair follicle's still there. She's wrong. She's just wrong. She doesn't know what the fuck she's talking about. Up next, Rudy Giuliani is uh, suing uh, Joe Biden for ruining Rudy's reputation, which is amazing because I don't think I don't think Joe Biden ruined Rudy Giuliani's reputation, right? I think uh, Rudy Giuliani uh, ruined Rudy Giuliani's reputation. Here we go. Here's him. Uh, unfortunately, not out front of uh, Four Seasons Home and Garden to announce his lawsuit. Thank, thank you, everybody. It's a, it's a typical New York Times malicious lie. I do not have an alcohol problem. I have never had an alcohol problem. And the reason I told you what I achieved is... Nobody could have achieved that if they did. When the hell was I drinking? I was working 24 hours a day. It's a big damn lie by a newspaper that's a disgrace and by a reporter who covered me, used to cover me very, very, uh, in a very glowing way, and now is vicious and mean in what she does. Thank and, you. And it, uh, it's my press conference. Vicious and mean. And if it weren't for the protections that the press gets, with Times Against Sullivan, I mean, she should be sued for libel. She should also be thrown out of the profession for being a damn liar. But that's okay. Right, but he's suing Joe Biden. <laughs> so fucking crazy. Absolutely a fucking crazy. Because Joe Biden ruined his reputation. Um. So I, I know how like the papers report things, right? They would probably say that sources close to Rudy Giuliani said that he was drinking a lot, something like that. I didn't read the article. It's behind a paywall. I'm not paying for the fucking article. And I know there's ways to get around the paywall, but I also had a fucking busy day today. So that's just the way it goes. Now, uh, we haven't uh, had a Jesse Waters clip in a while. And here we go. Uh, here's uh, Jesse Waters just saying shit. Honestly, I mean, isn't this all about crushing women, crushing women? That's my wheelhouse, Judge. <laughs> the Yikes. would you identify the, as that? There to go. <laughs> Let me finish. And I should be holding Dana's hand. I really need Dana here right now. The drag queen park ranger, yeah. Patty Gonia. <laughs> That's a great name. <laughs> great name. Uh, teaming up with Deb. They're doing this to celebrate Gay History Month. We just had Gay Pride, Pride month, month in June. Now they have their own history month. They have yes. two months. Be more mad, Jesse. The Irish only have St. Patty's Day. And the Italians, they just lost Columbus Day. Now, if I were a black American, which I am technically 0.1% <laughs> sub-Saharan African, I'd be pissed because black Americans only have one month. They have Black History Month. 
And I'm looking. Yeah, there's no black gay people. Where did all these gays come from? Building months up all of a sudden. That's not allowed. We're just coming around collecting months, friendo. I don't know what to tell you. We already took over wedding planning, uh, Broadway, and now we're just going to take all the fucking months. <laughs> it's like ordering two entrees at dinner. Mm. You have to have rules in a society. <laughs> and if you think about it, people are taking advantage because if you're a black lesbian, you get four months, judge. That's fantastic. Black lesbians already have four. They've taken over a third of the calendar. Yeah. You have Black History in February. You have Women's Month in May, probably. And then June, you have Black, <laughs> June, you have Gay, and then you have Gay History in September. That is a third of the year to celebrate yourself. Yep. It's too much. Oh, yeah. Too much celebration. So here's my proposal. They have to have one month per group. That's it. And I predict they will have a gay month coming up. Either a trans month, a... Probably a holiday where you get a day off. Remember they have Juneteenth? Yep. You're going to get a federal holiday where we don't have to come to work. Fuck yeah. If that happens, I want you to all, if you get the day off, thank me specifically. This is all my doing and that black lesbian that he was talking about. I don't know which one, but me and the black lesbian he's talking about, we teamed up and we're taking everything. everything just the two of us. If you can find out who she is, you could thank her. If you can't find out who she is, you can thank me. And, um, like, what the fuck? <laughs> We're coming for all the months. It's a gaycation day. That's right. Somebody in chat. Very nice. Gaycation. That should be the name of the holiday. Fuck it. Up next, we got Laura Trump. I bet her song sucks. She's claiming that, uh, her song's too patriotic and that, uh, it's not really climbing the fucking charts or some shit. <laughs> it's really sad because this is the but, but kind you, of treatment. You just can't make this up. I mean, you really can't. Yeah. Uh, well, but this is the kind of treatment that well, I. Well, nobody would make this up because it's stupid. Conservatives are used to. We're used to being censored. We're used to being shadow banned. Which yeah, look at look at the censorship. You're on a fucking billboard. I already know my song was shadow banned. Uh, so many people told me on Apple Music, on Spotify, on Amazon Music, they wouldn't put my song on the radio because it was too political. I bet the song sucks. I bet the song is fucking garbage. Anyway, now on to uh, Florida's friendliest hometown, The Villages. From, this is from Fox 13. Three years after people cast their ballots in that 2020 election, we've learned that a Sumter County man has been arrested, accused of signing a vote-by-mail ballot as his dead father. Robert Riverniver is charged with forgery and fraud. Robert Riverniver, I think, probably killed his father. Look at this guy. Who lives just outside the villages. Sumter County election officials say their staff researched the signatures on past mail-in votes from Robert and his father, and they determined... Both signatures matched Roberts. Every single signature on those return envelopes is checked by our people. And if we think there's any reason to disallow it, then we do. And this isn't the first time the voter fraud has happened in the villages. At least four <laughs> residents have been arrested for tampering with the 2020 vote. As for River Nider, he was booked into Sumter County Detention Center and released after posting $10,000 bond. <laughs> uh, it's Florida's friendliest hometown, everybody. The villages. <laughs> of course it was the villages. Uh, keep an eye on, by the way, our Tuesday night postgame show uh, public comment because we will be taking a look at the the county board of supervisors meeting where the villages is located one day soon here's a uaw worker going just going in on fucking jim kramer and i'm not talking about that um uh, anti-vax jim kramer that's i forget i forget his name now i'm talking about jim kramer jim kramer good mile in my shoes what's that guy uh jim kramer is that his name oh yeah let loose go for it piece of shit he needs to bring his fat ass to lansing and getting one of these plants over here and see how it feels you know it's it's high it's those who live in gra glass houses shouldn't throw stones right and i feel like people who don't do what we do don't know how it is uh, i don't know if you saw but 
Jim Cramer, uh, basically, he compares uh, the UAW president, Sean Fain, to Trotsky. Sean Fain, the guy who runs the UAW, I find him frightening. This man studied Trotsky. I got to tell you, he studied Trotsky before pre-ice picking era. Uh, thinks he's a communist for, you know, daring to demand more from the companies. But he basically advised the companies, hey, you know, if uh, the UAW wants to play hardball, shut them down. Go to Mexico for a couple of years, see how they like it. I think there's a nuclear option on the table if he's not careful. And that nuclear option is a country called Mexico. Say, listen, all the new, you want to know where the new ones are going to be made? We're going to continue to make the old ones. But Pueblo's got a 55,000 person factory for VW, and they got a good educational workforce, it's $5 an hour, no real pollution control rules, that's not to be mentioned, have free health care. So, you know what, you want to play ball? You want to keep doing this? Mexico. Glad to see you're standing up for the American worker here, Jim. Thanks for that. See how many people buy GM cars? See how many people buy big three cars, period? You know, if they want to shut down and go someplace else like that, that's fine. Go ahead. Do it. But I've been, I've owned GM cars my whole life. They do that. I will never buy a GM car again. I think he's wrong. I think people will buy the cars if they're good, no matter where they're made. But um, Jim Cramer can go fuck himself. There's a famous um, interview that I suggest people watch if they've ever seen it, where Jon Stewart just absolutely obliterates Jim Cramer. Like, just... Jim Cramer did, he was like, oh, this is a comedian. We're going to have some jokes. Uh, they didn't have any jokes. Sean Stewart did his homework on Jim Cramer and just absolutely laid waste to Jim Cramer. By the end of the interview, Jim Cramer was like sweating and shit, even like through his stage makeup. It was bad. Anyway, this, we're going to go across the pond, as they say, to the UK. Um, they got, they got kicked out of a bar. The, the LGBT conservatives were asked to leave a bar. Wow. Well, this is what I mean when I say it happens from both sides. So as, as he's mentioned, I'm on the board of the LGBT conservatives. I'm the vice chairman for outreach. And I was having a conversation with one of our members earlier on at our stand up conference just down from here. who was telling me about how he and a bunch of um, gay conservatives went to a gay bar in Manchester. I believe it was called the New Union Bar. And there was a drag act which was on that was making lots of rude and derogatory comments about conservatives and about Suella Braverman and making them feel very uncomfortable in this venue and apparently some of the other patrons in the venue were being quite uh, aggressive and rude and unkind towards them and then they decided that they were going to stay and have their drinks even though they were getting all of this abuse held at them and then about half an hour later out of absolutely nowhere four security guards walked up to them and physically threw them out of the bar physically manhandled them and wow. threw them out of this bar. I just think that's absolutely appalling that these places, they say they want diversity, but not diversity of thought, and they're chucking people out just for being conservatives. It's terrible. Also, my friend goes to another school. You can't meet him. And this bar, actually, they somehow managed to fit it inside of a hipster coffee shop. Like, I don't fucking, like, this is like an anecdote. This wasn't even this guy's own anecdote. This is like, he's re relaying an anecdote that someone may or may not have told him about getting kicked out of a bar. <clears throat> One, it could have just, this could just be a thing that didn't happen. Two, if the drag performers were saying things about conservatives and Tories they didn't like, these uh, maybe these people started talking shit. Who knows? Any number of things could be possible here. We don't know because we keep fucking, we don't know who, we don't know anything about this this incident. And it's just that we just got to take this guy's word for it that it happened. Also, uh, Manchester, probably one of the worst places to get kicked out of a bar, honestly. It's, 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 uh, it's, uh, maybe Bristol would be a little bit worse, the, the security and stuff. It's a, a pretty working class town. Anyway, here's Fire by Night, uh, Reject Robin Bullock on the Elijah's List show. This is Elijah's List. Uh, the show is famous for having Cat Kerr on. One of the only people who still has Cat Kerr on. Um, and this is probably the only time I've ever seen Robin Bullock like interviewed on anything. Um, and we're still trying to figure out if his hair is a wig. Trump knows that there's something beyond. He acknowledges Jesus all the time. Yes, he does. The thing is, is that he needs a prophet around him. That's true. He don't need a prophet that's standing in the spotlight for everybody to be looking at him standing beside him. He don't need that. He needs a prophet to 
to consult with in private. Yeah. All kings have them. They just, they call them something else. Advisors, this and that. But if he ever sees himself in scripture, there's no stopping you hmm. because you know God ordained this time. Hit a, hit a button on that said, I don't do demons. Somebody in chat called him Silly Ray Cyrus. That guy is a joke. Like he's, it's, it's funny. And, um, I forget which somebody in the chat called him a fire by night reject one night. And it was like one of the funniest fucking things I ever saw anybody say, because <laughs> that dude really probably would have been Blaine would have been like, nah, nah, you can't come on fire by night, dude. What the fuck? So here is, uh, the dumb, dumb left getting mad at each other here's max blumenthal of the dumb dumb left um mad at ben norton of the dumb dumb left because apparently they had a shared patreon and uh, ben, ben norton allegedly just ran off with all the money similar to what happened with the honey badger radio people actually the honey badger radio people were all sharing a patreon and then the that one lady from honey badger radio who kept her hair real short ran off with all the money this is a actually more common thing among grifters than you than you could uh, maybe imagine this is why, um, maybe just maybe instead of doing all this on your personal, with your personal money, maybe you incorporate, make a, make an LLC or a C corp or an S corp, depending upon the structure that you want your business to have. So that way you can't, nobody could do this, but I guess, you know, it's not it's too much work, too much work for the grift there. So here's Max Blumenthal, I guess, confronting Ben Norton. On a bus in Nicaragua? Hey, uh, Ben, I need to do this for the public record. Uh, can you tell the moderate rebels patreons why you stole the account from me? How much money you stole from me? Because we had a 50-50 agreement. Can you just tell the moderate rebels? Because they don't know. Your patrons don't know that you stole it from me. It's a fucking lie. You stole tens of thousands of dollars from me. Well, he has to get his, he has to get his brother, who's actually bigger than him, to stand in front of him. Why are you getting your twin brother to defend you? Why, are you, why, are you doing why did your brother steal from his dad? It's not a lie. And if it was a lie... Wait, how... How young is that girl that's with Ben Norton? But I have all the proof. I have all the receipts. You tried yeah, to dude. steal. You tried to steal our social media accounts too. Come on, you're a why thief. You, you're a white collar criminal. Lie. You're guilty of computer fraud. Why you? You should be computer a fraud. No, it's because you're you you're you're dumb. You got you're dumb. You're like here. We'll just share the Patreon account. Here's the password. No, you fucking idiot. Why Jackson Minkle was right. Everything he said was right about you. Why you come to Nicaragua to do this? I brought Ben to Nicaragua. No one will yeah. even know who Ben is if it weren't for that. So. It says no one can see his articles anymore because I'm not rewriting them for him. Dude, we're not here for this. Son of yeah, you're right. Fucking, we're not here for this. Oh, nice one, Ben. That's real original. Ben, what kind of a Marxist steals from people? <laughs> Ben, what kind of a Marxist steals from people? Wah, I thought we were grifter friends. Wah, wah, wah. Oh, this is so great. <laughs> like the, the fact that this is happening on a bus in Nic Nicaragua is, is bizarre. Like it's fucking bizarre. This is amazing. You've stolen tens of thousands of dollars from me. You've stolen so much money from me. You lied to the patrons. You changed the name to Multicolorista. Yeah, come on. You're getting your girlfriend to defend you. Why can't you speak for yourself like a man? You're a little coward. No, you stole from me so much money. Yo, dude. Okay, so what he's doing here is stupid oh, in the funny way, but it's also kind of dumb because he's like going after this guy in a foreign country. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm unsure, but to me, from what I'm seeing here, the context is that his uh, girl, girlfriend or partner or who looks maybe awful young here. My, 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 my guess here is that she's from Nicaragua or she's a Nicaraguan citizen. And that means she's got fucking people there. So this guy's an idiot. Look at this little coward. Really unprofessional. Dude. We'll resolve it when he pays the money back. He lied to the public about getting fired too. After he stabbed me in the back. Yeah. What'd you come to Nicaragua for? 
I came, like I came for the first time to show support. It has nothing to do with, don't bring our kid into it. Your, your boyfriend's a thief. Your boyfriend's a white collar criminal pretending to be a communist. That's why she's with him. You have nothing to say, do you? You can never, like, actually have a You lied so many times. You lied so many times to the public, and now you can't say anything in front of me. Look at the face of a complete thief and coward. Wow. I have no idea what happened here, but I love it. I love that. I love that this. Everything about this is bizarre. I love that. <clears throat> that they were stupid enough to basically share a Patreon account, like that maybe wasn't under the name of a business or something, I'm guessing, because if it was under the name of a business that they had equal, you know, uh, more or less equal ownership of, then there, this wouldn't have necessarily gone down this way. I love that they're on a bus in Nicaragua. I don't love that Ben's, the, girl who appears to the maybe it's a young woman but the person who appears to be his girlfriend looks 16 don't love that but yeah this is great the other people on the bus have no idea what they're talking about and i love he's like how can you claim to be a communist and then steal from me <laughs> fucking max blumenthal max blumenthal by the way bit of a bit of a nepo baby if you wanted to take a look into him a little bit of a trust fund baby himself not 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 convinced that he's uh, hurting for the money here. I, I I would look into this more, but we're not going to look into this anymore. Fuck that. Fuck these people. These people are grifters. These people are basically claiming, they all claim, to, they're claiming to be leftists, but they push like reactionary uh, stuff. They're like LaRoucheites, essentially. Not great. Not great. We got one more before we go into red light here, everybody. We got uh, Matt Walsh. Hasn't been on the docket in a while. Matt at Ari Drennan for... Uh, talking, uh, me, saying, saying mean things about homeschoolers. Well, the other day, one of the many ghouls at the left-wing propaganda outfit Media Matters said the quiet part out loud. Of course, uh, it, usually, not, usually it's not worth paying any attention to Media Matters most of the time. They're a partisan, Soros-funded operation that exists to defame and smear their political opponents. That's all they do. But as a window, and also they exist to promote the Daily Wire, and that's the part that we like. But as a, as a window into what the Biden, the Biden government and their allies are planning, it can be useful to check in on Media Matters and outfits like that every now and again. So with that in mind, here's what one of the Media Matters hacks, who uses the name Ari Drennan, posted the other day on uh, Twitter. Quote, hot take, but unless you have a very good reason, homeschooling should be illegal. Yes. Too many parents use it to abuse yes. their children, keeping them ignorant and easy to control. Yes. Now, Drennan was responding to a video of a child pointing out that Joe Biden sniffs children and how disgusting that is. Now, of course, any reasonable, well-adjusted child would agree that it's disgusting that this old man- I mean, he's right there. Children smell gross. Sniffs children, but that makes Joe Biden look bad, so Eric Drennan couldn't let it stand. And in the process, the quiet part was uttered out loud, which is this. Many on the left, especially the LGBT left, have hated homeschooling for a long time because they see it as a direct attack on their ability to indoctrinate the next generation of Americans. And by the way, they're right about that. It is a direct attack on their ability to do that. So they want to outlaw homeschooling, just like they did back in Germany in 1938. Wait, what? They'll accuse you of child abuse if you resist their indoctrination. No, wait, you accuse everybody of child abuse, though. And, and ultimately, they'll try to take your children away. And then they'll do it on some pretense that, you know, which is, which is actually very funny. That homeschooled children, uh, they're, be, they're being kept ignorant. They're not being well-educated. Meanwhile, the, the government education system is churning out high school graduates who can barely read, you know, who can't point to their own country on a map. And we're churning these people out every single year by the thousands. But homeschooling, that's the real problem. And that's what this is really about. It's, it's about the, the agenda against homeschooling. It's hard to imagine another reason why the Biden administration could possibly want to deport the Ramaikas. <laughs> so there are, there are cases when homeschooling is appropriate. There are certainly good parents who are in communities of homeschooling, and it is appropriate. But a lot of the times, yeah, it's, it's religious wackos that want to keep their kids away from like the secular world. And... I'm not sure we should outlaw homeschooling because if, or, or even like place like some sort of 
a regulation on it where you have to prove that you're not a religious wacko because I feel like that would probably violate the First Amendment and I don't want to give the government that kind of power. But I think like, yeah, people are doing homeschool. People that are homeschooling uh, it should be, I, I would tend to look at them with some suspicion. Absolutely. And maybe they could, you know, maybe I would find out that they're, they have a perfectly good reason their kid's sickly or maybe their kid, you know, was being bullied and they're like, this is just too much. And uh, we have a single income I, and I'm, uh, you know, I'm capable of going over the course material. There may be cases where, in fact, there are cases where it's, you know, fine. But a lot of times it's just to train up, the, train up the child and um, it ain't great. <clears throat> so that was the podcast portion of the show. We got kind of close to two hours this week. We did an hour 40, not bad. Uh, podcast listeners, uh, go ahead and head on over to patreon.com slash echoplex or eplex.store. You can go ahead and uh, subscribe at the $5 level to get red light. Um, you get the whole show, actually. Um, you get a higher quality uh, feed of it, too, than you get on the live feed. So do record it here. Um, also, if you don't have the money or just don't want to spend the money, I'm not really paywalling it over five bucks. Just email me. I can send you links to the to the videos. Um, make sure you also, while you're at eplex.store, check out our Halloween collection. It's uh, near the top of the page. You can use the code HALLOWEEN2023 in all caps to get free shipping on any of the items in our Halloween collection. And also go to theruffies.com. You can use the code ECHOPLEX to get 10% off of anything over at theruffies.com because we fucking love the Ruffies and because they're a client of mine now. So this is Periscope by Boomers. I am going to change the contents of my beverage and change the color of the lights in this room. And we're going to get into the post game. Thanks everybody for hanging out. I'll be back in a few minutes.
the goth DJs and Twitch witches are hanging out on Thursday for the bad VHS rips, unblinking eyes, and fire by night. Thetans and Satans comes from an interest in the cult of Scientology, moral panics, Satanism, and how they set the tone for the extremist social media panics of today. We really earn our weird left Twitch badge with this show, watching the world go red light in reverse every Thursday at 9 p.m. Pacific on twitch.tv slash echoplexmedia. Find our full schedule at echoplexmedia.com.